uh, about this, uh, going over to El Bethel. What is so interesting about this is this very fact that back in, I guess it was May uh, or June, um, you know, when the Lord puts that call in your heart to preach, uh, you just got to do it. I mean, wow. you just have to do it. Eddie's been so gracious to say, well, now, you know, you, you, know, you can preach. And I said, I know that, but this is, Pastor, this is your flock. This is, uh, and it's my flock, yes, but it's his flock. He's pastor. Anyway, so I get this call from a church in Union. Yeah, Union, South Carolina. Where, not where uh, Brian was, but a, a church in Union. And I go down there. And I go down there again, and they're wanting an intentional interim. And I said, well, we McGowan and I prayed about it, and then I, I, what I said to their, their deacons, was, and I hadn't told you this, I don't think. I said, we'll come. I said, because there's just fire in these bones of Skinny Benny, and he's ready to preach again. And so we agreed that we wouldn't come until probably the end of all, first of August. I said, okay, well, we can live with that. And, and uh, then this rascal over here decides that he's not feeling good. Decides he's going back to Charleston for some time. And uh, I said, all right, Miguel and I were talking and we were praying. So I called the folks at Union and I said this. I said, listen. I love my church where I am. Yes, God's called me to preach, but our dear pastor's having just a little relapsing, and we don't know what's, what's going to happen. And I'm going to ask you to release my name and release me from my commitment. And they said they would do that. And I said, uh, our pastor, he should do well. He should get well, but he's been battling leukemia. And... Uh, and so to hear him come in tonight, uh, this is why I'm telling this tonight. <laughs> and so uh, they were very gracious and kind. They said, we understand your love, et cetera, et cetera. So Magali and I were talking, and I said, you know, if Eddie Cooper's going to get well, and he's going to overcome this thing, God's going to have to slap me in the face in order for me to leave. Wait a minute. Bless Pete. I hadn't said that. 30 minutes later, I get a call from a guy at uh, El Bethel Baptist Church saying, listen, we, we know you. I said, no, you don't. I'm not, I don't know who you are. <laughs> Long story short, I said, well, yeah, we do. We watch you on TV. And I said, listen, watching somebody on TV is totally different than seeing somebody in person hearing them preach, hearing them teach. It's just totally different. And I said, no, no, we, we'd like for you to come talk to us about being our pa interim pastor. And long story short, I told them and I said, uh, and so what you did, when we got this affirmation today that the leukemia was 0%, I'm telling you, you're coming back fine. You're going to be fine. And, and not knowing this, I told them a couple, three weeks ago, that I said, yes, we'll come. And, uh, and that this is just affirmation once again. I mean, it really, really is. It's not that we want to go, but it's something we have to do right now in, in these days. And uh, I'm grateful that he's doing well. Uh, he's going to do very well. I don't worry about that. But anyways, uh, we're, we're looking forward. The only thing I know, I, you, I, you are, you're part of me and I'm part of you, except... When the children play basketball, I got to pull for the children up here <laughs> at El Bethel if they'll let me in coach a team. And I know, I know you got the meeting Sunday, and we've got a guy going down there, Sunday, several people, but there's no, they don't need me to coach, so they got, well, I know, and, <laughs> and I might do it, but anyways, uh, bottom line is, that's how all that started, how it all came about, and so... Uh, uh, so what I will do on Sunday, uh, they, have, they have determined they want an intentional interim. So what does an intentional interim do? Uh, I went, I was trained at the convention offices about five years ago about 
being interim pastors and intentional interim pastors. An intentional interim pastor goes in basically and uh, he is seen at, at, to the church and as the church that he, he is the pastor, not temporary, okay? Please understand. And uh, that gives the, the individual uh, who is the intentional pastor, that, that gives him uh, the ability that the church says, we will follow your leadership. We're going to ask you to help us with our vision and implement our vision and your vision. We're asking you, we're giving you responsibility for the church. And, and so I will, I will be doing that. I will be uh, doing that and leading this church. The first thing we do is I have a paper, I have a document that is signed in front of the congregation. It is a document that says, I will come and serve as your interim, uh, interim pastor or whatever, but I will never be a candidate, nor will you ever call me to be your pastor. Because see, a lot of guys go, you know this, Jim, guys go as interims, and they fall in love with the people, the people fall in love with them, and they want them to stay. But that's not my call. Please understand that. And I told them that. So we will sign it in public. In front of the entire church family, the deacon chairman signs it and I sign it. So that we know, they know that I'm only there for a certain amount of time and I'm only there to help them, prepare them for their next pastor. That's what, that's what we're doing. All right, tonight. Oh, just a little teaching tonight. Yeah, keep the clock up there. I got my eyes on it. We are going over to one of our favorite books. I want you to go to the book of Romans. We're going to Romans chapter 12. You know it very well. Two verses. If you're able, if you're able, let's stand as we honor the reading of God's holy word, please, in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Now listen very carefully. Paul is writing. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God that you Present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. May God bless to us the reading of his holy inspired, ever free word. Now bow your heads as we pray. Loving Father, we thank you for these words. They speak to our hearts. Remind us of what we have committed and are constantly recommitting to you daily as we seek to serve you, King of King and Lord of Lords. We make our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. You know, whenever you read this word, I beseech you, Brethren, that word is a little, probably in King James, maybe it's translated therefore. Uh, you, you see that, uh, uh, I beseech you, therefore. It can be therefore, therefore. You'll find it translated loosely, I beseech you. But that word that comes the second time, therefore, I beseech you, urge you, almost to a point of begging, but not begging out of poverty. It's a, an urgency. I, I beseech you, uh, therefore. Now, let me tell you something about that word, therefore. That's an important word because when you see that, and particularly in the New Testament, even Old Testament for that matter, when you see that one word, therefore, it means Everything that has been written before this is included in what I'm about to tell you. Okay? So you're with me on that. Everything, these first 11 chapters, all of this, all of this, Paul says, I'm urging you. And if you will allow me to do so, I'm begging you. I'm pleading with you. Because he's just been his heart sharing 11, 11 uh, chapters here. He says, I want you to understand God's grace and God's faith. And so what he's trying to do, he says, I want you, by the mercy of God, I want you to present your body 
as a living sacrifice. Now, wait a minute. Now, remember, when Paul wrote this book to the Romans, most of the recipients were Gentiles. He was full well, and most of the Gentiles knew about Torah law. And what is Torah law? What is the Torah? Somebody tell me quickly, what's the Torah? First five books of the Bible. And and Torah law specified that to worship God, you had to offer a sacrifice, an animal, without blemish. Well, Paul was writing the Gentiles. He didn't want to mess up their mind thinking they had to go find a barnyard animal and kill it in order to go to church. So what he tried to do was he, he used something that never... I want you to present yourselves as a living sacrifice. All right, that made a little more sense than go running out there trying to kill a chicken or a lamb or something like that. But you're going to do that, and he said, look at it very carefully. He says, you're going to present your bodies living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And that little idiom phrase, that phraseology right there, can be best translated worship. Those five words can be best translated worship. So he says, present that present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God in worship. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. What it means. And then, and then look at what it does in, in, in verse 2. I've got a few other things I'm going to add. Just giving you an overview here very quickly. And do not be conformed to this world. But become a butterfly. That's a, that's a little John phraseology. He, he, and you know this. He uses the word metamorphosis. All right? And, uh, and we all know the example of, uh, you see it up there? Now, look carefully. Don't conform. Now, remember, he's already talked about our changing our lives and changing our minds. And, and then he said, but look, but be transformed. That is be metamorphosized. All right? That's what it, and, and he's saying this. Now remember, because we're new creatures, before we got transformed, we were caterpillars. Caterpillar's ugly. I, I mean, it is. It's a bug. Do you like caterpillars, honey? I mean, they're bugs. I, there's nothing else good to say about them. They're bugs. If you smash them, they stink. I'm just, they, I mean, they do. Don't step on them. I'm, they're just ugly, ugly. But, but look, Paul says, you're going to be transformed. You're going to become like a butterfly because what happens to a caterpillar? A caterpillar comes and finds itself in a cocoon. And while in that cocoon, that, that ugly bug becomes a beautiful butterfly. Beautiful. And Paul says, I want you to understand that, that you have been so changed by the gospel, you're not conforming, that is, falling into the, the clutches of the world, but you have been so, so, so changed, you are a new creature. Just like the caterpillar was old, you're the new butterfly. And he says, you're going to do that. Look at what else he says. And uh, transformed to this world by the tra being transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And you know when Paul uses that word perfect will, that's a, a, it's a better translation to say complete, okay? A complete will of God. He, King James and New King James like to use that perfect will. And, and, that's, and that's certainly acceptable, of course. But really. What we're talking about is, uh, uh, if you will, the complete will of God. Now, with, with our understanding of that, let me, just, let me tell you what I did real quick, just real quick. I'm not, I don't think I'm going to try to bore you tonight. we got just about seven minutes and a half, and I'm going to... All right. Right, Laman Moody. You know, Dr. Moody was, was a great, great evangelist. He said this. Scripture was not given to us for information. But Scripture was given to us for transformation. Are you with me? Amen. 
transformation. So what I want to do very, very quickly, and, and time will catch us, but that's okay. I, I, I came together about 10, 11, what I call 11 ways you and I can be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Renewing, all right? That's, that's the key word, renewing. So what I did, uh, our pastor loves to preach alliteratively. Brian likes to preach with, uh, with alliterations. I'm, I'm not real big into alliterative type of preaching, but what I did was I found six of them and I added six. I have 12 and all. So let me tell you how, uh, how you and I can be transformed by the renewing of our minds. The first thing we do is what I've called re-surrender. You re-surrender. Are you as surrendered today as you were that day Christ came into your heart and you said, Lord, I, I, I want to be a Christian. I, I, I surrender all. I mean, you know, if we're going to renew our minds, it's constant. we're going to have to have a re-surrendering of our, our, our lives. We really are. Quickly. Not only do we have to re-surrender. I added this. I said, we need to rejoice. Rejoice. What does Philippians 4 say? Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord. Always. You remember that? No, you don't. Nick Mary, do you remember that? Do you? You want to sing it with me? Okay. <laughs> Just wanted to see who was listening. You know, we find our strength through the joy of the Lord. We're not talking about happiness here. We're talking about the joy of the Lord. And in order to, to renew our minds, and if you will, to, to renew and continue that transformation, we not only resurrender, but we rejoice in the Lord. The third thing we do is we remember. Remember what it was when you came to the Lord Jesus Christ. You remember? I mean, I was 13 years old. I was a rounder, but I was a typical 13-year-old. Uh, but back then in the 60s, life was different than life in the 21st century. I know that. You know that. But I, I, I remember when I go back and I think back, I, I, I can say, Lord, I thank you for all you've done for me. I, I can remember some of the tough times, but I'll tell you, it's oftentimes good to remember the good things uh, that you are becoming in Christ Jesus. It, uh, it, it really is. I'll tell you something else you want to do. You want to reckon yourself to those old desires. Just You have to come to have that, that reconciliation time. You reckon yourself to those old desires. Tell you something else you do. You reconsider now notice I'm using re, re, reconsider. You know, sometimes we, we think back of, of uh, the conditioning that we've had placed upon our hearts and lives. I mean, sometimes we, we have to be careful. The world can, uh, Satan is so squirrely. He can slip into our, uh, into our thinking Mercy and, and cloud our thinking and, and, and we can't get anything done. Sometimes we want to analyze so much that I will remind you that analysis sometimes can lead to paralysis. You can just study and study and study a situation so much. Reconsider. Number six, I would tell you to replace what is fleshly, but replace it with God's word. We need to... Re Seven, realize. Realize God's will for your life and see what he has in all of life's situations. Realize. Uh, be in everything Paul said, we give thanks, we pray. Number eight, we need to reconcile, if you will, a spirit of reconciliation with those who are in conflict with you. You address them. That's how we continue to uh, re be transformed by the renewing of our minds. We're reconciling. Number nine, we're going to resist the world and its attacks and Satan and the wiles of, of, of Satan, but we're going to resist um, 
what the devil would love to see us give in to. Number 10, we're going to reconsider. That is the effects. We're going to reconsider the effects that renewal brings into our lives. You know, every day is a new day. And never lose the wonder of it. Number 11, this is one of mine. I said we need to recharge our battery. I, I, I'm concerned and I'm scared of people who, who, who say uh, I don't ever need to be recharged or refreshed. Whoo, that scares me to death. I do. I, I do. I just tell you I need to recharge my batteries. And sometimes it's a recharging of an afternoon. Sometimes you have to get away. I mean, you, you just need to, to get away. Recharge. And that's how we continue to, to, you know, God infuses new energy when we take time. You know, Charles Stanley, I uh, always admired, admired Charles for, for many things. And uh, he still does this to this day. Now, he didn't go up to the mountains like he used to. He slowed down. His health has slowed him some down. But he would go uh, every year for either four to six weeks, every year, to the mountains. Only his family knew where he was. Sequestered himself. And there he renewed his spirit. Yeah. He does that today, but more in, in, as a, at home. And then lastly, I would tell you to rethink. Rethink. Make sure. See if you need to do something that you're not doing. See if you're doing something that you should quit doing. The, all of this is going to help trans, continue the transformation. You know, I'm a work in progress. You probably are too. I don't know, but I am. And I've got a long ways to go. And maybe as the song says, a short time to get there. But uh, I'm grateful that I've been transformed, that I've been saved, that I've been washed in the blood. It's 8 o'clock. Let's stand as we have our prayer time. And again, now, I want you to have a great... I want you to know, on behalf of Magali and myself, we love you dearly. We always will. And uh, you pray for us as we go down the road. And uh, Eddie, get better sooner than later. Get this thing over with. When you go down, I tell, I tell the pastor... Every time, do I not, I write him this. I said, when you get down there, I said, you tell those doctors, you tell them this. You've got places to go, people to see, money to spend, and sermons to preach. That's what I tell, do I not? I tell you that every single time so that he'll get back here and get back into the swing of things. And so we're praying for you, Pastor, as you go. Uh, you and Lori, and uh, you're in good hands. Brian is here, and, uh, you know. So listen, but please know that Magali and I love you dearly. And you'll continue to see us from time to time, okay? Uh, we've got meetings with our school in a couple of weeks. We update you on that. And then uh, there'll be times we'll slip in. And so anyways, and so we're in great shape. Carol and uh, the, our senior adult team are going to be leading you. Jesse's got our, our sports, our softball and basketball and Brian's going to be leading us and, and watching particularly over the youth listen uh, we're and of course our dear pastors Lord's going to give him a second win like he's never had and uh, whoo you know I look forward to the day that you that you have to have two services at 9 and 10 30 because you can't hold the people in the other service just tell you and then and Sunday what am I going to preach at El Bethel it's simply entitled to dream again. That's from old, one of my old professors, to dream again. All right, let's bow our heads. Loving Father, thanks for bringing us together in your house. We love you so much. You've enabled us to love one another. I pray now that as we depart from this place that we'll be reminded of just how grand and great your love is. So now as we're the church gathered, in a moment, we'll be the church scattered. I pray that our God talk will match our God walk. I pray in life's labors and in life's leisures that we will see we're departing for the field of mission. And I pray that the world will see in us 
Jesus and the love of Jesus. We make our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Good night. night. Take care.